Today we're talking about the pre-production process for our feature film, The Pumpkin Man. Pre-production is probably my least favorite part of making any film because it's like the part where you are visualizing everything in your head, but you can't just go out and make it. And seeing as this is our first feature film, I kind of wanted to run through some of the differences between pre-production of a feature film versus a short film, because as you can probably imagine, there's a lot of differences. Now, obviously take all of this with a huge grain of salt because this is a really low budget feature. I mean, we don't have trailers or anything. This is this is just a bunch of friends getting together to make something because we're tired of waiting for Hollywood to do it. And I wanted to make this list of, of differences between short films and features uh, for anyone that might be in a similar situation. The first thing you're going to hear me say quite a lot in this video is just how much longer everything takes. I mean, with Pumpkin Man Demon of Fall, it took us about a month of pre-production and then we just went out and filmed it. It was a simple 10 page script, no storyboard, no shot list. We didn't have a plan. We just went out and filmed it. But with something of this size, you obviously need to plan things out a little bit more. So with this, I mean, I think we're approaching the end of five months in pre-production and right now an 83 page script. So while it's frustrating how much longer everything takes, it really is worth it because you get more time to actually refine your story. So the first thing that we did was make an outline of the general story, every scene that we wanted to have happen and everything that happens in those scenes and what characters are present during those scenes. And then once we felt like that was in a good place where we felt the pacing would be right on point, we went into writing the script. Now, I can't stress this enough. I think it's best if you write with more than one person because you might forget a storyline that, that you had set up in, in the first act, but by the third act, it's completely gone. I know that happened quite a few times with The Pumpkin Man where I would be writing and I had something that I had set up, but I never paid it off. And luckily there were three other people who wrote this film with me and that made it a lot easier to have, have those people there to say, you forgot something or vice versa, I could do the same for them. So I think it, it really helps and it, and it makes it a lot less daunting to have more people writing the same thing because when you're trying to write an entire script and an entire movie, it can be challenging, especially in some of the more mundane scenes that you might not want to write. I mean, this is a horror film and I love writing the horror scenes, but all of the boring dialogue scenes, I wasn't really a big fan of writing. Uh, so it was nice to be able to divvy it up a little bit and I could focus on, on the horror scenes while uh, some of the other people who are better at dialogue could focus on some of the more dialogue heavy scenes. And, and that just made it a lot easier and a lot more approachable. And there's people painting outside right now. They're literally painting right outside this window. So if you hear that, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't do anything about it. So to collaborate on a script, I, I don't know if there are other softwares out there that do this. I'm, I'm sure there are, but for this, we did Writer Duet, which you only need one person to pay for the subscription and then anyone else can make a free account and jump in on a project that you create. So I would recommend doing that. I can't remember how expensive it is per month, but it's it's fairly affordable and, and it allowed us to knock out this script a lot faster than it would have if I had just been writing it myself. So while the script was being written and I had a lot of help with that, I used Backstage for the first time to find a cast. And I had never used this website before, but I don't think I'll ever go back from using it because of how easy it made it to find people in my area that were seriously interested in this project. And it, it was really intuitive how you could just do audition tapes online. You didn't have to set up any in-person auditions or anything like that. You could just do it all digitally. And it really streamlined the process and helped me get through a lot of auditions quickly. And it's how we ended up finding our lead, Barbara Dessa, who we think is going to bring just an incredible amount of energy and life to this film. The second I saw her audition tape, I just, I I was sold. She, she is so good and so energetic and just so much fun to be around. And she's gonna make the set 
so much more enjoyable to work on, uh, especially if we're shooting for long days. So we're really excited about that. So if you haven't used Backstage in the past, I would look into it. I, I think it's a really good uh, website and, and it makes it really easy to find people who are interested in, in your projects and who might want to work on not just this one, but, but the next one. Now, my favorite part of pre-production, which could be argued isn't even a part of pre-production, but I like to do it ahead of actual production because it, it gives people something to look at and get excited about, which is the poster. Now, I, I'm a big fan of, of movie posters. We get a lot of our artwork from Bottleneck Gallery and Mondo uh, because they just make really gorgeous artwork uh, out of posters. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this because I feel like posters are a doorway to your film. That, that's something an audience member can look at and be enticed by. It's their first interaction with the film and they might be looking at it thinking, what is that about? What what What's going on there? That's why I wanted to get a poster that was really going to stand out and, and really sell our film without even having to have any context of what the film was about. I just wanted something that was going to be enough to get people to look at it and say, that looks awesome. And that's when I discovered Casey Booth art. Casey is a phenomenal artist. I reached out to him and asked him to do this poster and the second that I started describing what I wanted, he instantly got it. And I sent him a sketch of what I, the general concept of, of the poster and, and kind of what I wanted. And when he sent me back the rough sketch, I instantly knew that I had chosen the right person. And it was just his rough sketch. And it already looked 10,000 times better than the sketch that I sent him. Uh, and when he finally delivered the final art, it is just gorgeous. It's actually right behind me here. It is. A, a wonderful piece of art. If you're looking for a, a, an awesome, badass movie poster, definitely check out Casey. He's got awesome art in his gallery on his website, as well as artwork that you can buy on his website. Definitely go check him out. He is a, a really great artist and, and he just brought the anticipation for this movie up to the next level. And I can't thank him enough for all the awesome work that he did on, on the poster. And I, I'm so excited for the film just because of his poster. So so Casey, thank you so much. Um, and, and definitely go check him out. So the last thing that we did for the film was a table read. And because we don't have like an actual office space, this is just our apartment, we decided to do it all virtually through Google Meet. And that was such an awesome experience. If you've never done a table read before, you probably don't need to do it with a short film, but with a feature, it's the first time you can really get a sense of the characters and, and the world that you're creating. So I, I had read the script multiple times over and the four writers of the film all got together and read it together. And while that was good, it wasn't actually hearing the voices that will be in your film. And that completely changed it for me because even after the writers all read through it, I was still a bit on the fence about a few things. But the second I heard the actual actors read through it, it completely changed the dynamic of, of how it was read the first time into something that was really, really great. So with that, we're kind of nearing the end of pre-production. I mean, this has been a five month process, probably five and a half to six by the time we're actually filming and it's just been a whirlwind. It's a completely different experience. There's a lot more moving parts and you have to be really dedicated. The one thing you cannot do without is an incredible team behind you. You, you cannot make a, a feature film on your own like this without awesome people constantly supporting you, awesome people wanting to work on it because it's not a one man job. You know, this isn't just my film. It's, it's the, the film of everybody working on it. We've assembled a wonderful cast and crew of, of amazing people that I cannot wait to work on this with because of just how excited they are to work on it. Uh, with that, I'm gonna keep on updating you throughout all of the production process. We're gonna start filming here in, if all goes well, a few weeks. So hopefully you'll see more videos from, from us about all of this because there's a lot coming and I, I couldn't be more excited for it. So like, comment, and subscribe if you want to stay updated with everything that's going on with this film and Southridge Films in general. Also, we just launched a website, southridgefilms.com, so if you want to check that out, you can. Uh, follow us at Southridge Films and 
follow Pumpkin Man Film on Instagram as well. And with all that out of the way, I'll see you guys next time.